Who hate gas? You know what I love? And when I say love, I'm it is totally sarcastic. It's when you go to when you are given an appointment time. Your load is gonna be ready for 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Of course, I'm not gonna be there then because I'm deadheading a thousand miles to get that But you're deadheading. And you're gonna get there. You're gonna be able to. You're gonna be there at the yard for that that, that GPS plan. That is really bastards. But uh, you get that load at 6 p.m. So 1800. And you get there. And you know they tell you to drop your trailer, and they tell you your load's not ready. So go park across the street. All right. Here it is, though. Again, at this point, it's like 1830. My load's not ready. You know, it'll be ready between 7 and 11 a.m. So give it the benefit of the doubt, saying 10 to 11. Okay. So even though you know a couple hours ago, right? that's still fucking hours away. That was hours ago. Like a half a day ago, why is the load not ready? So, I'm, I'm sitting across the street, and midnight rolls by. Then, I, here it is, like I said, I got there, it's 1800. I have this park grocery since 1830. So, it's been fucking six hours pretty much. The load's not ready. I'm starting to get pissed off now, because my clock is started rolling from uh, four, 1400. So, you know, there's already half my day gone. Once you start rolling, you're 14 rolls. Well, if you're 14 expires, it doesn't matter if you... I only drove 50 miles that day. Well, wait. I drove 100 miles that day. So, I mean, I only drove 100 miles in 14 hours. Well, once that clock starts rolling, if you don't get a 10-hour break in there, that's it. I mean, you gotta you gotta fucking park it. Uh, but okay. So, but you know, whatever. This is why I have a laptop. When I bought, my, I brought. I'm just sitting across the street. I, I fucking used up some of some that time to make up some you know get some good shit going on in my game. So I don't have a lot of time, and I you know I kind of have other. Well, my off time, I do have you know obligations to do in that game that I said I was gonna do. So. I gotta, gotta make sure I'm ready for that. But, so, here it is now, 3 o'clock. My load is still not ready. What the fuck? Seriously, what the fuck? I had pretty much given hope that I was getting my load today. Like, uh, that, that all that day. I had pretty much saying, okay, I'm pretty much getting a full day of detention. I almost did. I almost did. Cause oh, that's what I forgot to mention. God damn it. All right. So anyway, JCT's detention. You don't. It's the four. The four hours is free. So you, they can hold your four hours, and, and you, don't, you don't get no money. So if you're out, which is a little bullshit, honestly. That's my whole detention rant video, like a while back. This is what I'm talking about. Detention is bullshit. Receivers are fucking bullshit. If you don't got enough fucking staff, hire staff. So now I should not get punished for you fucking not being able to fulfill your your duties. You 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 made this order. You fulfill this fucking order on time. And it's not my responsibility to make sure that you have enough time, you know, or whatever. You don't have the trailer. It's not my job. It's not my fault you didn't have the trailer. It's your job to get a hold of the company saying, hey, we need another trailer or two. That is your job as a shipper and receiver. Oh, I guess it'd be shipper, not really receiver. But okay. Now it's 4.30 a.m. They call me. Motherfuckers. <laughs> a nine hour detention. I had like $360 detention. But they fucking... Well, actually, like 30 bucks. But they call, they're like, 
hours, but I mean, am I gonna have a, anywhere to park exactly in that two and a half hours? No. So really, I only have like an hour and a half to drive. But now, I, because of what happened, to get my load. Okay, so get my load. This place has a couple docks that are really, really low, so they jack the fucking trailer all the way up, and they never put it down back to where it was when I dropped it, because that'd be too convenient. Because okay, the, the trucks that they use in these yards with the trailers around are not like my truck. Their truck, when they hook up to the trailer, they literally can lift the trailer up into the air, like the, the front of it. So they don't have to crank the landing gear up and down. They just, it's a hydraulic lift, they just fucking lift it up. And hook up the, the hoses so they have brakes and that's it. So, but so, a lot of these guys don't understand about the landing gear when they raise or lower it because they don't really have, they don't, they, they have a fucking built-in cheap mechanic. But, um, so I go to get my load. Keep in mind, my fucking load is 40, 43,000 pounds. My load is heavy. But I, I fucking pick up this load, or I go to pick up this load. I go to hook up it first. Before I even realize how fucking high center it was. Thank God I dump my airbags because I fucking fucked up. The first time I've ever done this, First time I've ever done this. I backed up too much before I caught it. I caught, thankfully it wasn't like it was really high up where it completely went over the landing gear. So it scraped it or it went over the key cream or the fifth, the fifth wheel. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for, the fifth wheel. It scraped the fifth wheel going over it. So that was, I was like, oh shit, that didn't sound right. Stop, immediately stopped. It was so high up. It scraped the fifth wheel, which means it was too high up. I couldn't hook up to it. So I had to drop the airbags, thankfully for that. Because anybody who knows, if you back, if you fuck up, you back, you back your fifth wheel plate past the kingpin. It's a pretty much, it's a pretty hard job to get that unhooked. Like you know, get it because the king, fifth wheel is not level. The fifth wheel tilts down until the trailer hooks up to it, and it, then it levels out. So the kingpin sticks down about like 10 inches. See that right? Um, down into the king, which would be the, the fifth wheel area. So leveling out the fifth wheel by yourself, so you, can, so you can back, you know, pull forward out of this fuck up, it's pretty hard to do by yourself. And luckily, this trailer was lifted, was fucking, it was, the trailer was all foot over me. Uh, so I was able to just fucking drop the airbags and just fucking just crawl forward just in case I wasn't like it was I wasn't low enough, which I was by like two inches. But then thankfully this yard dog realized he came up to me because there was a trailer on my way. So he was coming to move that anyway so I could swing out because I mean the trailer was like dropped in the middle of this yard and these, they had these these, uh, these these axles pushed all the way back. It takes a lot far, a lot longer for the trailer to get behind you when it's being loud. So I'm sitting there. I've been cranking on this fucker because you cannot crank it down in high gear at all with any real weight on it. No, I mean it, 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 you can't move this fucking thing. So I'm in low low gear, which is like they were like a bicycle. In low gear, you're doing all of this work and not getting, not making very much progress. So I'm, I'm in this, this low gear and I've been cranking on it. I've done like 30 spins already and it's like, it hasn't really gone down. It's gone down maybe like a couple inches. I'm like, oh fuck, I'm out of breath. It's 17 degrees outside. So, you know, doing a workout in cold air is a bit of a, a bit hard. It drains your lung, lung power pretty quickly. Not to mention in cold air, your muscle starts trying to seize up on you. But, uh, okay, so I, I get there. Or no, no, I'm not getting there. But uh, this yard dog shows up. He's ready. He's getting ready to, to grab the trailer. But he, he's coming like he's on the, the right side of the trailer. So he's on my side. I was already walking up to him anyway, getting ready to flag him down. Cause I was getting ready to ask him if I get out from underneath this trailer, can you, you know, can you get under it, and lift it up so I can fucking lower the landing gear? But he had read my mind. I think he realized that they forgot to lower the fucker. And I was just done. And so, he, before he even said anything, uh, I pretty much said, hey, can you, he's 
like, yeah, you want me to get under that so that you can lower landing gear? I was like, yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm out of breath. He said, hey, I can do that. So he tells me to pull out and just pull up somewhere and he'll pull, you know, pull it up to me. And I, so he, he gets over there. He pulls it beside me. He pulls, I haven't pulled up the right, like, or the kingpin directly next to my fist, but it's like an eyeball it. Uh, cause I would get to look down at the trailer and see it. And, uh, but he gets it, he goes it, he makes sure I'm, re like, he makes sure it's all the way to where I need to be before he drops it. Uh, and, and then I tell him thanks and he leaves and goes with the trailer. But, so it took me like a half hour doing that bullshit. But now I only have like an hour drive time. I didn't get very far. I, I didn't. I only drove, uh, 50 hours at the or 50 hours. Yeah, I drove 50 hours until midnight. Yeah, that's what happened. Super trucker over here. Fuck, if y'all you, was trying to drive 10 hours, I'm driving 50 hours in six, 6 hours. Yeah, got one of it. But no, uh, I drove 50 miles, and I was like, eh, I have an hour left, and now I need to go find myself somewhere to sleep. Coming out of Greeley, I'd gotten off the 34s. I, I, I pretty much slept at that, that stub, so I'll, of 76 and 34. It's not a bad place. It's a really good biscuits and gravy. I was not expecting that. That shit, that, that shit was good. But, that's how it is sometimes. They, these fucking receivers and shippers need to start being held accountable. We have ELDs now, which I don't, okay. I'm not one of these truckers that dump that, oh, fuck ELDs. ELDs is going to be the worst thing for the industry. Okay, those guys need to grow the fuck up and move on. Realize it. The changes happen. There's a re and not to mention, uh, as a lot of these guys don't like tech. They're the fucking average age of a trucker is 55. Fuck you older guys. You guys need to adapt. You tell those younger guys, oh, we're a bunch of whiny little bastards, you know, back in my day. Fucking yeah, back in your day, yeah, we fucking had to do everything by hand. Why wouldn't you want something that helps fucking make your job more efficient? Tech is not the fucking evil like fucking like thing that's gonna take over the world. It's a tool. Use it. By the way, back you know, back in the day, trucks did not have airbags in the seats. Yo, know, you fucking love them down, don't you? Yeah, see? Fucking adapt like you tell us young guys to do. I feel like I'm making a meme say, okay, boomers. But, you know, I'm not one of those guys. Like, it just gets fucking old. It's like, oh, you young guys. Like, and then you old, you old guys cry in bit just as fucking much as us young guys. I don't want to hear your shit. why you guys are all fucking miserable. But, that eh. No, but these shipping receivers need to start being held accountable for how fucking long they take to get us out the door. The standard should be three hours. At most. Two to three hours to get us fucking out the door. Preferably quicker. There are some places you go to, I'm out, the, I'm fucking full of load of 40,000 pounds and I'm out the door in fucking 40 minutes. And they'll have like 30 trucks and docks and, and, and doors, bays, docks, whatever you want to call it. So I don't I don't see why everybody can't do that. Now, excluding holidays and everything else, uh, you know, that's obviously some of the stuff could be. Like, I, I had more patience when COVID first hit because, oh my God, I had never seen so many trucks in my life. There's a Costco back in March that I was expecting 900 trucks in one day. They were four hours behind. And Costco's quick. Costco's usually good. You go to Costco, usually you get fully loaded or fully empty in, under, in two hours. I don't have two hours. They're usually great about it. But they are four hours behind. And this is the one of the biggest Costco DCs. This is the one in, in uh, Tracy. So Tracy Cali. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely thinking of coming out with something. My, my biggest gripe about this whole field is just like, it's just these shippers and receivers having no fucking, you know, it's like no understanding. Uh, it's like, not 
to mention, if I'm there, okay, my, I did a Walmart load, okay, and uh, that Graham, you watched it loot. My appointment was scheduled for uh, 5.30. I got there an hour, uh, like an hour ahead of schedule, or an hour ahead of time, you know, I've heard Walmart is, you gotta check in an hour ahead of schedule, uh, ahead of the appointment time. The line is fucking long, whatever. It takes me 40 minutes to get to the guard shack. And then it takes me a half hour because they fucked up on their PO. All Walmart's doing. Uh, they didn't have all the POs in their system. So they labeled me as late, even though the guard shack said I would not be late. But they took me in. And because I had dairy, I, they I, they held me up because I only had dairy. I was the last fucking truck they let go. For no reason, just because I had dairy. And it was a general grocery. I had, I had everything. I, I had dairy. I had uh, deli. I had a little bit... I was general grocery load, a little bit of everything, because I had dairy, and to pull them, they were, I was lucky they even took me and didn't have me come back, no, fuck you Walmart, fuck you, I was there when I was supposed to be there, you do your fucking job, don't hold me up for six hours because you can't be, oh, I'm inconvenienced because you guys scheduled it, you guys fucking scheduled your own appointment, it's not my fault you didn't, you didn't remember what the fuck you ordered, Yeah, I better watch out. I might turn into one of these invisible truckers. Nah, I'm not going to. I think my rants and rage are just part of like the be just to add some energy to the video. I, you know, nobody likes somebody who talks like this. Yeah, and then I and then I did this. Yeah, now we're going by this hospital exercise. Yeah, nobody likes that. Nobody likes that shit. Ask you gotta ask a spy some flares. You don't, you don't gotta add fake energy, but make it at least be real with it. But, uh, you know, I missed, I've like, I ran into my first snowstorm. And I, I, I don't know if they call it a snowstorm. It was dumping snow, but the wheels were wet. And I was only about an hour of like like frozen snow. Like it was like more like frozen sludge and ice on the roof. I don't know if I'm gonna count that. Especially being a Wyoming guy. Yeah, I'm not counting that. But the truck got hit by its first snow. There we go. That's the label. The truck ran into getting hit by its first snow. And I was excited. Because I love snow. Because anybody who lives in Wyoming either loves the wind or loves snow. Can't live in Wyoming and not love the wind or the snow. And I fucking love snow. Especially in the air. If you live in a state that has, like, doesn't have any real population and has, always has fresh air, snow smells amazing. It smells better than rain. Rain's got nothing on fresh snow coming down. You know, the air is snow in the air and you fucking put your nose up to the air and you take a big old whiff. Nothing's better than that. Fuck you, rain. You think you're, you're as good as that. No, no, my cat. Easy. Dude, I'm happy with my cat now. I mean, my cat was behaving like he does normally at home, but I mean, there was a couple things he was still sort of like unsure he wanted to do. Even three months into being in a truck at this point, like he had no interest in jumping into the top bunk. I'm walking around, finding new places to sleep up there or lay down when the truck is moving. Now he'll fucking jump up there. I mean, he's got, he's careful about it because I mean, I think he, he realizes it's very bumpy up there. But hey, like he'll come over and eat with the truck in motion. That was one thing he would wait the day before, like two and a half months. He'd wait till the truck was like stopped, he'd come out and eat, and drink. I mean, he'd take a shit and like whatever when the truck was moving, but he would not eat. He didn't get sick. He, he did like have it get sick for the first time in three months in the truck. That's that. He, he had a little throw up. Uh, he's not like my other cat who fucking throws up water like a bastard. But it was chunked and. That was a little weird. I, I don't know. I it just, could, just could have been a day. Like, I mean, first time three months, okay. Uh, I mean, everybody's gonna get an upset stomach at some point, or do not settle right, or just something. I'll take that. I'll take chunk throw up any up and over any other form of getting sick. And he did. He did. Okay, he did give me a scare because when I when he got his shots. 
He handled that like a champ. I was kind of surprised. Uh, I was not expecting him to be that cool about it because he's a he's generally a cautious cat. He avoids people who are not me. He'll hide. Like if I'm talking to somebody, if you're some people, hide in the hide in the big blanket like that. That's just him. But when he got his shots. They did, okay, I, put, I, I took him into the bed in a laundry bag because, I mean, it's one of his favorite things to lay in his clothes. And he hates kennels, so I was thinking, well, how can I carry him into the bed but not have to worry about getting clawed or having to try to dig into my shoulder and hang off for dear life like he's about to get murdered or something. But I'll just keep him calm. And I thought of the laundry bag. Yeah. Alright. Just carry him like a, you know, carry him like a, like a pillow or something. You know, I just carried him, carried him in. I let the vet know, I said, hey, this is his comfort thing. Uh, uh, like, he, he, he finds comfort, like, he is a bit of, he does get, he does have, like, anxiety thing. Like, he's a very anxious cat. He's not going to attack you or anything, but this discomforts him. Uh, so they gave him the shot in the laundry bag. They did, they said, hey, we didn't even try to take him out or nothing. We just opened it up, checked, we, they like, he, we even gave him his, like, little health inspection in the laundry bag. Uh, that's when I found I lose 16 pounds, about 2 pounds of fat, holding his weight pretty well. He's a big boy. But, about like, 3 or 4 days after he got shot, I'm on the road. They didn't warn me about any, like, any of the possibility of swelling or mound at the, the shot, like, injection point. So let's get the shit out of me, all of a sudden he's got a swelling, like, he's got a, like, a, a scab. Uh, and then like a mound, like it was like a hard mound. Like, it looked like a little like fucking pieces mound. I mean, it wasn't that large, obviously, but it was about like the size of my thumb. You know, the radius. Like, I'm, I'm not a big guy. My thumbs aren't like fat or anything. Well, like 130 pounds, my thumbs are gonna be, you know, not very big. So it was like the size of a nickel, pretty much. 